spooky soulmates. How are you today? Let's wait for them to answer. <laughs> I was about to say, you call them spooky soulmates again. It's been I, a while. I know. Okay. Well, that's really good to hear, guys. I'm <laughs> glad that you're doing so well and that, you know, things have been going. I mean, I don't know what you said, but I hope it was positive. Hopefully you just had a better week than <laughs> we did. <laughs> We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. <laughs> It's everything's just fine. Stressful. Everything's fine. It's all fine. I'm fine. Are you fine? <laughs> Everybody's fine. Um, yes, it, it has been a very stressful week. Let's just take a moment. Take a collective all right, deep everybody, breath. Everybody, breathe, breathe in. <sighs> breathe out. Okay. I feel better. Do you feel better? Yeah, I do. Okay, that good. was nice. Yeah. That was nice. Maybe we need to start a meditation episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I have really bad news for you guys. Are you ready? Moira. Committed planticide. <laughs> planticide. <laughs> I was really, I thought she was okay. I thought she was in a good emotional state, but no. <laughs> Out of nowhere, I am sitting in my bed relaxing after I'd finally gotten the little guy down for a nap and Jackson was away at school and I was like, okay, you know, it's my time to chill and to enjoy myself and just to read a little bit. And all of a sudden, <laughs> Myra comes crashing down. She was a hanging plant for those who don't know. Oh, they, they should know. I mean, of course, they everybody's like, I'm sure, chomping at the bit to hear about my plants. <laughs> I haven't talked about them in a while. Um, I was anyway, just reminding, gentle reminder. Yeah. So, yeah, she left a huge mud puddle in my floor because <laughs> I had just watered her and flung dirt on the curtains, on the wall, just on the dog bed, on our bed, literally everywhere. And it took me like a good hour to clean everything up and to shampoo the carpets and everything. So I replanted her, but she's not looking great. <laughs> so are we sure it wasn't a paranormal thing? I, you know, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't be positive, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Any fun anecdotes on your end? Oh God. No. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla's really tired tonight, guys. Oh my gosh. It's been a week. Yeah. And I just spent like seven hours researching for this episode because mm -hmm. I could not find what I needed to find. And then I found it at the last minute at the last minute. So. Kind of like my Herald situation where <laughs> yeah. I stayed up reading all night. Like Kayla has been uh, researching hard and documentary ing yes. <laughs> today. So with a three year old talking nonstop. The whole time. I don't know. So, I don't know how that worked out. That uh, was, it was like I'd read a sentence and I'm like, wait, what did that say? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we both but we did it. We, we are bringing you an Aliens episode. Yes. <laughs> I'm so excited. I love the thought of aliens and the concept and just thinking that we may not be alone out there. Um, I mean, I don't want them to hurt us or invade our planet or anything in a negative way. No, but, no. <laughs> you know, just the thought that we are not alone is just so intriguing to me. Yes. Well, and with the storm area 51 thing approaching swiftly. Yes. I had to look into area 51 and see what I could find about it. And it's interesting. Yeah. So, well, before we hop into that, um, I always make Kayla do this, but I will do it today. <laughs> um, you can find us. <laughs> good the good luck sleeping podcast on facebook good luck sleeping dot lipson dot com is our website um good luck sleeping podcast on instagram <laughs> yes. gl sleeping on twitter and am i missing anything you can email us at good luck sleeping podcast at gmail.com yeah. um and we're also on spotify itunes stitcher and google play yes and we finally surpassed on our little facebook group 200 members yes thank you guys so much for inviting people and passing us along to those that you think would enjoy it yeah it's so much fun especially when we see new faces posting in the group it's like ah yay you'll like it so oh, no. <laughs> and not only that but we have hit i mean i think we can we can share that we've hit over four thousand downloads yeah on I, our different platforms i'm bad at math and i thought that was going to take a lot longer than it did but <laughs> Hey, I was pleasantly surprised when I was wrong, yeah. as per usual. So we, we can't be, uh, we can't grow without you guys. And, uh, you know, we're all in this together. It's a community and we really appreciate. We're all in this together. Sorry, song you triggered that? High School Musical. I've never seen that in my entire life. I grew up on that. Kayla and I are from different eras. <laughs> <laughs> I was essentially born in the 1950s and she's, <laughs> she's current. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding guys um so not only that but we do have a giveaway coming up we're giving away one of our shirts that kayla designed it is super cute and cool and you and can so appropriate after this episode absolutely <laughs> um you can see a picture of that on our 
It's pinned on Twitter and in our Facebook group. In our group. Facebook group, yep. And it's in our Instagram too, but it might be buried a little. Yeah. But all you have to do to enter that giveaway, um, we're giving away three. Of three. Them. Mm-hmm. And we just need you to give us a review on either Stitcher or iTunes. iTunes preferably if you have it, but we understand that not everybody does. It does not have to be a positive review, but if it isn't, we're going to cry ourselves to sleep and... <laughs> You know, I don't know how we'll go on after that, but just make sure you leave a comment because if you mm-hmm. don't, it does not leave us a username and that's how we're going to pick is from the usernames. Yeah. So you have until sep- September 29th is the date. Yeah. It'll kick off our fun October month with that yes. giveaway. So Spooktober. I'm going to call it that from <laughs> now on. so cute. Spooktober. Oh, I like it. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to hop into the episode after that and I believe... I am starting us out here with... Rachel is going to dive in for us. With alien types and abductions. So, Kayla. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, Rachel. Do you want to know why I'm voting for Bernie Sanders in the next presidential election? Um, Would it have something to do with the fact that he's promised to release information on aliens? (laughs) Yes, and that is the only reason. (laughs) Because Hillary Clinton also promised that. I think that's like the new Democratic platform is, oh, we can get him with the aliens. (laughs) Okay, like, okay, I'm a a Bernie fan, Andy. Anyway, I like, I mean, I want to feel the burn, (laughs) which is the worst presidential motto. Oh, gosh, it is so bad. In the world. But (laughs) anyway, but yeah, he says he's prepared to disclose any government information about UFO foes but only if he wins but you have to remember even the president has limitations and he may not be technically allowed to release that yeah but the fact that that is such a huge pull is it just shows how many people are dying to know about aliens and what the government knows about them so that's it it's it's interesting And the government knows a lot more than it's telling you yes so i started my research with i wanted to know the probability of there being other life forms okay I, want, I wanted to kind of Give take a, the yeah, a scientific approach. So have you ever heard of the Drake equation? No. Okay. Uh, this was from an article called What Are the Odds That Aliens Exist by Brian Coberlein. And it states that it was first proposed by Frank Drake in 1961. And it's, you simply take the rate, simply, okay. You simply take the rate at which stars form in our galaxy and multiply it by the fraction of stars with planets. The average number of planets per star that could support life the fraction of those that actually develop life, the fraction of life-bearing planets that develop civilization, the fraction of civilizations that have detectable okay. signals, and finally, the length of time a civilization might last. Do you ever get that moment where you're like, <clears throat> this person is so much more intelligent than me? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. Yes. Uh, crunch the numbers, and you have the number of civilizations in our galaxy capable of communicating with us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is? Uh, we don't know. Oh. <laughs> Because we don't know how many life-supporting planets there exactly, are Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So anyway, it says, unfortunately, the really important factors of the Drake equation are still completely unknown. <laughs> uh, well, you realize most of this alien stuff only started coming into being around the 1940s. Yeah. Like, this is still fairly fresh. That's true. That's Hasn't true. even been around a whole century yet. So, yeah. We've got a lot to learn about. We do. Um, so how many potentially hab- habitable, habitable, habitable <clears throat> planets does life actually arise? How many of those give rise to civilizations? How long does a typical civilization last? No idea. Depending on the answer to those questions, the number of civilizations in our galaxy could range from hundreds of thousands to only one. Cool. <laughs> so there could be uh, potentially, you know. Quite a few civilizations out there. The Milky Way is, you know, what where our galaxy is. Oh, yeah. And it's tiny. Exactly. It's like a drop in the bucket. Yeah. And it's kind of bold to think that we are the only intelligent life out there. Yeah. Well, uh, why is there so much other stuff mm-hmm. if we're the only thing that matters? Right. Right. So there's got to be more things out there. I agree. Whether or not they're intelligent, I don't know. They probably are way more intelligent than us. And they look (laughs) at us like these tiny, insignificant little worms, you know, that don't know anything. There's probably like dumber planets and then smarter planets, you know, just like people. I feel like we're, yeah, kind of like middle, (laughs) mid range, you know, the price pay. That's what earth is. Yeah, we're we're middle class. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We're blue collar. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So the different types of aliens, there are the Flatwoods monster. And those are the tall humanoids with uh-huh. spade-shaped heads. There are the greys. Mm, and wait, they, that's the one we typically think of. Yes. 
They are the gray-skinned humanoids, usually around three to four feet tall, bald, with black almond-shaped eyes, nostrils without a nose, slits for mouths, no ears, and three to four fingers, including the thumb. They have been the center of quite a few cases of alleged alien contact over the years. So that's your main alien dude. There's the Hopkinsville Goblin, (laughs) which are the small, greenish-silver humanoids. Okay. I got this from Wikipedia, if anybody (laughs) wants to fact-check me. (laughs) Fact-check me (laughs) on Wikipedia. (laughs) There are the little green men. Um, These are... They kind of, you know, go to say that these are basically just for cultural reference, that they are not official (laughs) alien types. Yeah, because we don't have proof yet. Yeah. Not too much of it, anyway. Yeah. And Nordics slash aliens. These are the humanoids with stereotypical Nordic features, tall, blonde hair, blue eyes... And I've been featured in several cases of contact. It is said the Vikings are aliens. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> well, it is said that they are from ancient Earth, but presented themselves as ETs in the past, and they moved from living on the surface to living underground around the Himalayas area for a natural event. Okay, I bet the chupacabra was their pet, probably. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I forgot about that. Then there's the reptilians. <laughs> Which we all know are real. And those are the tall, scaly humanoids. Of course. Okay. So there are UFOs, but have you ever heard of USOs? Not. Well, isn't USO like the big war thing? But like... They are the unidentified submersible objects. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was yeah. <laughs> um, these, I watched, there's a show on the Travel Channel called Alien Highway fascinating yeah i've actually seen that i haven't ever watched it but i have seen it on there it's about a i think it's a former fbi agent and he was talking about aliens making his claims known and one of the taglines in the opening sequence is they can take my badge but they can't take my voice (laughs) (laughs) and he they did an episode it's him his son and then another she's actually a paranormal paranormal researcher and they did an episode on usos and they're so common and apparently there's like a hot spot On the Pacific Ocean, uh, off of the coast of California, and there's like a lot of like cave systems. And if you look at the sonar, there's like all these weird pillar type things underwater, and a lot of things can be seen coming out from the ocean. Okay, well, we already know that we have no clue what's in the ocean. Yeah, yeah. They actually in the of course they would hide there. Well, right, right. (laughs) And uh, they did an episode where they went deep sea diving at night. In the middle of the Pacific Ocean, right oh, off oh. of the edge of this, yes. <laughs> and they saw a light underneath their boat, and it couldn't have been a reflection of anything because, you and know. it wasn't like one of those angler-fish things that, you know, it was in Finding Nemo, and it's like, ooh, it's it, pretty it was a, It was a larger light, yeah. Okay. And they, they went to a marine biologist, and they're like, hey, what is this? And they <laughs> what also... What glows? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, well, it could be like phytoplankton, but uh, that's... It's not. <laughs> I can tell you that it's not. Yeah. And they also had recordings of different um, sound clips that they showed her. One of them was a whale mating call. Um, But another (laughs) one she couldn't identify that she'd never heard before in all of her dives. So I thought that was fascinating. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to abductions. The first alien abduction narrative to be widely publicized was the Betty and Barney Hill abduction in 1961. Uh, yeah. I, I read a little bit on this, but not much. Yeah. I'm not going to really get into it. I'm yeah. just telling you that's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> you can look it up if you want, guys. Um, millions believe that they've been abducted. Uh, common themes with abduction is losing time. Yeah. Tissue samples being taken and things being implanted under their skin. Interesting. Yes. Oh, also many stories of impregnating female aliens and forced sexual situations. I think that's just a fantasy. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I, you well, know, I don't know. Some of them are very disturbing of the, the scenarios that I've read. But, and memories seem to surface under hypnosis. Yeah, they're in the documentary that I watched, the guy actually used hypnosis to try and recall like things that... Mm-hmm. You know, because he was like, I just see this stuff every day. So it's normal for me. So he was trying to like recall what was abnormal. Right. And I was like, okay, the hypnosis thing is a little weird. But then I realized it's not that weird. Mm -mm. And this is actually a legit thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's a, it's a common theme with a lot of abductions where, you know, they'll show their, them going under hypnosis and they're pulling off things that they had no idea about. So it's, it's fascinating. Which by the way, just to interject in here, this has nothing to do with hardly anything, but if you guys like aliens and you want to see a really intense alien horror movie, 
watched the fourth kind. Oh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It was so it just reminded me because there was that hypnosis part in it. Yeah. It is so intense. Carry so <laughs> I'm going to um, dive into the stories that I've come across because okay, I find that the most interesting. Uh, this first one is from the History Channel and it's history.com. The article is When Top Gun Pilots Tangled with a Baffling Tic Tac Shaped UFO by Greg <laughs> The Flying Tic Tac. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So <clears throat> I'm just going to read it. It began as a routine naval training exercise, but it would soon become one of the best documented and most baffling UFO sightings of the 21st century. Witnesses include highly trained military personnel, among them several deeply experienced radar operators and fighter pilots who at the time of the settings were at the controls of arguably the most advanced flight technology ever created. And yet no one can explain what they saw. The date was November 14th, 2004, and the location was the Pacific Ocean, about 100, it's always the Pacific Ocean, it is, about 100 miles southwest of San Diego, California. The USS Nimitz carrier strike group, which included the nuclear-powered carrier and the missile cruiser USS Princeton, were conducting a series of drills prior to deployment in the, per- in the Persian Gulf. At about 2 p.m., two FA-18F <coughs> Super Hornet fighter jets from the Nimitz received an unusual order from an operations officer aboard the Princeton. Already airborne, the pilots were told to stop their training maneuvers and proceed to new coordinates for a real-world task. More ominously, the officer asked if they were carrying live weapons. They replied that they were not. The Princeton's highly advanced radar had been picking up mysterious objects for several days by then. The Navy called them Amelis Aerial Vehicles, or AAVs, a term the military preferred to unidentified flying objects, or UFOs, which had been tainted by its association with flying saucers, little green men, and countless crackpots. <laughs> according to Kevin Day, according to Kevin Day, the Princeton senior radar operator at the time, his screen showed well over 100 AAVs over the course of the week. Watching them on the display was like watching snow fall from the sky, he says in his first ever on-camera interview. According to Day, the AAVs appeared at an altitude greater than 80,000 feet, far higher than commercial or military jets mm-hmm. typically fly. Initially, the Princeton's radar team didn't believe what they were seeing, chalked up the anomalies to an equipment malfunction, but after they determined that everything was operating as it should, and they began detecting instances in which the AAVs dropped with astounding speed to lower, busier airspace, Day approached the Princeton's commander about taking action. I was chomping at the bit, he says. I just really wanted to intercept these things. Two fighters were diverted to intercept one of the strange objects. When they first arrived on the scene, the pilots didn't see any flying objects. But they did observe what the lead pilot, Commander David Fravor, later referred to as a disturbance in the ocean. <gasps> okay, so this isn't a UFO. This is a USO. <laughs> The water was churning, the way the white waves breaking over what looked like a large object just under the surface. Then they noticed one of the flying or one of the objects flying about fifty feet above the water. Fravor, the commander do you have something to say? Well maybe these UFOs are USOs also because that's where they hide when they're done doing whatever they're doing. They that's go down true. in the ocean. That's true. They're little colonies down there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's why it was coming out of the water. Yeah. That doesn't explain the uh, Midwestern ufo experiences but what in nevada well like up in the midwest like illinois and oh, i didn't know there were any up there oh there's ufo sightings everywhere well i know but i mean they these things can fly super duper fast oh, so what true. if they're just coming out of the ocean doing their thing and then going back in that's true yeah that's true sure, sure, maybe sure, they sure. never actually leave our airspace that's true so they noticed one of the flying objects about 50 feet above the water. Fravor, the commander of the elite Black Aces Squadron, who was a Top Gun program graduate with more than 16 years of flying experience, described it as about 40 feet long, shaped like a Tic Tac candy, and with no obvious means of propulsion. It's white. It has no wings. It has no rotors. I go, holy shit, what is that? <laughs> Even Otter were its swift and erratic movements, which Fravor described to history as something he had never seen in his life. This thing would go from one way to another, similar to if you threw a ping pong ball against the wall. Another Navy pilot who served as Fravor's wingman in the air in the air that day and who spoke to history on condition of anom- anom- <clears throat> Can you say that word for me? Anonymity? Yeah, sure. Gave an account very... S- he wanted to remain... Anonymous. Anonymous. <laughs> Gave an account very similar to Fravor's. Now a high-ranking Navy officer, she was a rookie pilot back in 2004. She remembered being terrified, 
watching as the more experienced pilot tried to intercept the strange craft. It was more unpredictable. High G, rapid velocity, and rapid acceleration. So you're wondering, how can I possibly fight this? As Fravor flew around it, he says the craft ascended and came right at his plane. All of a sudden, it kind of turns and rapidly accelerates. Beyond anything I've ever seen, it crosses my nose and it's gone. As the tic-tac accelerated into the distance, according to Day... I love that they'd continue to refer to it as the tic-tac. I know, it's so official sounding. <laughs> the breath mint. <laughs> Navy jets began launching off carri- the carrier to try and intercept the other mysterious objects the Princeton's radar was tracking. While Fravor wasn't able to capture the encounter on video, one of the pilots who took off after he landed was able to track it down. He managed to capture a video of the Tic Tac. <laughs> have you watched the video? <laughs> Using a highly sensitive infrared camera, I have. Okay, because I came across the same story and I watched it and I was like, I bet that was what Rachel was talking about. Yes. It's fascinating, though. It is. It's very fascinating. We'll see if we can link it in the group. I don't know is if there I... there some way <laughs> that we can link a If video I can find it on, on YouTube, internet? I should be able to do it. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm making fun of myself. You guys will hear that in another episode. Yeah. <laughs> You'll know that by now. Also, I just want to say, our things tie in again. <laughs> I love that. Yes. So this next encounter, it's a personal story. And my father and my aunt had a very similar story that I'm going to explain after this. Okay. It's cray cray. Are you ready? <laughs> it goes, this is from <laughs> Punchy. Okay, love it. <laughs> That's all I can give you. That's all. That's all I got. It says it was. It was, was from Reddit. If you oh, didn't okay. Know. Yeah, that, that <laughs> they, makes more sense. <laughs> I always hate reading Reddit stories sometimes because they can be like the most valid story, and then it's like by like Whopper Face or something. Yeah. You know, like just some <laughs> stupid name that you're like. Thanks I for losing credibility. Yeah, I specifically filtered out a story earlier because it had the c word. <laughs> their, oh, yeah. their name was that in the c word. I was like, <laughs> Yeah, no, we're not doing that one. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Punchy says, I'm not sure what happened, but I've always joked that an, an alien abduction could explain it. I was a young kid, grade school age, and it was a hot summer night and I was headed to bed. I remember sitting in bed and having this bad feeling. It was more than just a feeling. I knew something was coming, coming to get me, like a horrifying reoccurrence that was about to happen again, that my body remembered, but my mind did not. I knew it was close. Probably I was within its eyesight. I was terrified beyond my wits and had no idea of what, uh, but it was going to get me no matter what I did. I hadn't sat down on my bed for more than a few seconds, so it wasn't sleep paralysis. I turned around slowly to scan my room, and it was the next morning, just like that. I was still dressed and everything still in mid-turn, except that it was the next day. One second, I was terrified at night, and as I turned around, it was the next morning. I felt re- well-rested, yet it was only a second which I was awake for that had passed. That's so crazy. I went downstairs and got on with my day. I told the people in my house what had happened. and They acted like I just told them that the grass was in the yard. (laughs) (laughs) Like it was the most mundane thing ever. So I dropped it. So this is what happened to my dad. Okay. So this is the story of my dad. He had four siblings. One of them was my aunt. I'm not going to say her name just because I don't know if she wants to be telling the story on the internet. Um, So they had just gotten done playing basketball and apparently the basketball hoop was in the garage so they were playing and either my grandma or my grandpa had called them in for the night and told them to come inside get ready for bed and then go to bed so they were in their separate rooms my dad had a room upstairs and my aunt had a room downstairs and my dad was lying in bed thinking about the game and thinking about his day and all of a sudden it was daylight so he looked outside and it was day It was day, and then it was night, and then it was day, then night, day, night, day. And this all happened within seconds. Okay? So he went downstairs, and my grandma, his mom, was making breakfast, and he was sitting at the breakfast table, just kind of like, what just happened? He said that he did feel rested, and he was talking to my my grandma about what had happened and he was like this is so insane like it went from day to night to day to night to day to night you know yeah and then my aunt while he was explaining this was staring at him with these wide eyes because she experienced the exact same thing oh my gosh and they had talked about it years later and he's like i've brought it up to her multiple times and she always we can never explain it like we remember it and we just have no explanation explanation at all for it that's so, so crazy. I know. So who knows if it was 
paranormal or if it was an alien thing or if it was just like some weird time warp thing that happened to them i don't know what if you're like part alien and that's why you're so weird dude i'm a reptilian (laughs) that makes so much sense (laughs) exactly i would not be shocked (laughs) i'd be like oh i wish i would have known earlier in my life (sighs) all right so the last story i believe yes is In 1976, four friends were in their early 20s and they went camping in rural Maine. On the second night, they had noticed a very bright light, but nothing more. On the third night, they decided to try night fishing. In the canoe, they noticed the bright light again. One of the men used a flashlight to flash light in an SOS pattern at the light. (laughs) It was a lot of light words. The light then expanded and, and enveloped all four men. That's the last thing they remember. They, they literally asked it for help. They were asking for this. <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't have much pity. So they, quote unquote, woke up back at their campsite with no recollection of what had ended up happening with the light or how they got off the water. The fire that they'd stoked up before they left just minutes ago, intended to still be burning when they returned, was completely burned down to embers. So the aftermath of this, Jack Weiner. Oh, how unfortunate. Was the first to start having nightmares. In the dreams, he saw beings with long necks and large heads. He saw the beings examining him while Jim, Chuck, and Charlie sat on a nearby bench, not able to intervene. The beings had large, metallic, glowing eyes with no lids, and their hands were insect-like with four fingers. The other three men were experiencing very similar dreams with short mental clips of that night on the lake. In 1988, out of curiosity... Jim Weiner attended a <laughs> UFO conference hosted by Raymond Fowler. Weiner met Fowler afterwards and related his strange encounter. The investigator was excited about Jim's story, especially the fact that it was a multiple witness occurrence. Fowler suggested to Jim that he and the others undergo regressive hypnosis. After the, the sessions, it was revealed that all four men had memories of being abducted and subjected to humiliating physical examinations, including the taking of skin and fluid samples. The and dis- they asked for all of it. <laughs> they did. <laughs> the description of the aliens was consistent. The four men, being artists, were able to make detailed sketches of the entities, the craft, and the examining instruments. Chuck Rack added that the aliens' test area was similar to a vet's office with a silvery table. He also re- related a strange fact. He had much different difficulty in focusing on the aliens. When he tried, he could, but he could not put an exact image to them. He compared it to trying to tune in to a fuzzy radio station. After the psychiatric examinations, all four of the men were deemed to be mentally stable and they passed all the lie detector tests. Even Jim. Here. <laughs> I just added that last sentence for fun. <laughs> so that's a wrap up for my segment. Well, that's crazy because I'm just going to get into it because you'll be like, oh, when I when you hear all of this. Okay. Okay. My research... I started out like looking into alien abductions and stuff, but then I was like, I I realized I'm way too skeptical (laughs) for some of these things. So I started researching Area 51 because I was going to do that anyway. And at first I was like almost foiled by the government. I was like, damn it. This is another chupacabra. It doesn't exist. This is so stupid. And then I was like, no, just keep pushing, Kayla. Keep pushing. And I found it. I found my smoking gun. And I don't believe the government for a minute now. <laughs> so are you a believer in aliens now? I am. See, I feel like that's how this up, this like whole podcast is going. You're becoming a I'm believer slowly in coming over. so many things. <laughs> yes. And I'm so proud of you, especially Bigfoot. Kayla's a huge Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Yeah. No, like I did not believe in ghosts before. And now like I undeniably believe that spirits that have passed over or hang out, you know, can interact with us. Yep. And it's not always just demonic. Yep. Um, I'm very proud of that belief, by the way. I'm glad that you came over to this. <laughs> I've grown. Side. Yeah. Um, and then with the aliens, I mean, the government can be convincing. They mm-hmm. really can. Mm-hmm. But they also have a lot to lose if they aren't. So. I'm so excited. <sighs> if you think about it, it seems weird that aliens would not exist. Like, we sit there and we talk about how weird it would be if they did exist. Mm-hmm. But really... How can we be the only thing in this gigantic universe? That's exactly what we were saying earlier. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you throw in the theory of multiple, like alternate realities and things, like Mm -hmm. it just doesn't make sense for us to be the only thing out there. Yeah. Um, 
I did find it harder to believe than ghosts and demons at first, simply because I had never experienced it myself. Okay. And I think that's what it is. Like for me, I'm like a visual learner. I'm mm-hmm. like, I have to experience something. How to, ironic. Like, Cause there's an alien right there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And I still looked. <laughs> You're like, Oh really? <laughs> hey, surprise. Um, but anyway, so I just, I need to like, fully understand something like I'm, I'm a faith person but at the same time like i need to it needs to make sense to me for me to believe it so mm-hmm. area 51 did that for me all right so area 51 is named for its location on the map i didn't know that they, yeah they did not want to give away its actual location <laughs> okay. so they were like we're just gonna give it like this number um it was originally created as a top secret area to create planes and weaponry during the 1950s Quote, quote, (laughs) Um, when the Cold War was seemingly inevitable, um, the Soviets backed North Korea's invasion of South Korea, and it looked like an actual war was going to happen. So that was kind of like the arms race time. Okay. And they supposedly were using this facility to try and generate better aircraft, things that could like go way higher in the sky and like observe what was going on in Russia without the Russians seeing it. Because anytime the Russians saw it, they would shoot them down. <laughs> yeah, okay. So this is all <laughs> what I found at first. Okay. Um, Eisenhower started the U-2 program, which is actually true, um, when this this U-2 thing was a new aircraft. It's my favorite band, by the way, guys. <laughs> Maybe that's where it came from. Yeah. Um, that's, that is what they named it. <laughs> it is? Seriously? Yeah, oh, the aircraft, cool. yeah. When the new aircraft started flying, so did the rumors, as planes of that type had never been seen before. Planes previously could only go ten to 20,000 feet in air. Now this thing was soaring up to 60,000 feet, and people didn't understand what they were. Mm, yeah, okay. Okay. Makes sense. So it makes sense. And I actually looked back, because I wanted to know the history this time. 1903 is when the first plane, the Wright brothers, took flight. Oh, okay. And 1960... No, 1950 is when this started happening. We were suddenly 60,000 feet in the air. That's a huge jump. Yeah. In yeah. moments. It's a shock to people. Yeah. So I was like, okay, it makes sense, I guess. They also, I found that a lot of people see Mylar balloons in the air and they think that those are UFOs yeah. because of the way that the light reflects off of them. Yeah. So. Well, um, before Area 51 was first created... Um, there was something called the Roswell crash and it was in the Nevada desert. Yep. Um, it was the summer of 1947. So three years before area 51 came to be. Okay. A rancher discovered unidentifiable debris in his sheep pasture outside Roswell. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not Nevada, New Mexico. Close though. Very <laughs> close. They're like neighboring. We're really good at geography <laughs> and history. Um, although officials from the local air force base asserted that it was a crashed weather balloon. Many people believed it was the remains of an extraterrestrial flying saucer. Um, A series of secret dummy drops in New Mexico during the 1950s heightened their suspicions. Nearly 50 years after the story of the mysterious debris broke, the U.S. military issued a report linking the incident to a top secret atomic espionage project called Project Mogul. Mm -hmm. Mogul, not Mogul. I was going to say (laughs) Mogul. That's Harry Potter. Mogul. Um, Still, many people continue to embrace the UFO theory, and hundreds of curiosity seekers visit Roswell and the crash site every year. See, I'm doing it It's not just me. Okay. Okay, so the government explained that away. It's it's believable. They can't tell you these top secret projects because they're trying to keep it from the other entities that they're might go to, to war with us. Literally keep it top secret. Exactly. <laughs> Imagine that. So people only can theorize. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other theory relating to Area Fifty One was that the moon landing was fake there in one of the hangars. Yep. Um, there was actually a 2001 Fox TV documentary called Conspiracy Theory. Did we land on the moon? My parents watched it and I watched it with them. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> um, it spotted eerie inconsistencies in NASA's Apollo images and TV footage. Among them included no blast craters are visible under the landing modules. Yep. God, Something about mean? the shadow of Neil Armstrong, too. Oh, shadows intersect instead of running parallel. Okay. Um, suggesting the presence of an unnatural light source. Yeah, extra light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, a planted American flag appears to ripple in a breeze, although there's no wind on the moon. Yep. Um, the hour-long special sparked such interest in the topic that NASA took the unusual step of issuing a news release and posting a point-by-point rebuttal <laughs> on its website. The press release began, yes, astronauts did land on the moon. <laughs> in various documents, NASA has countered that the Apollo astronauts passed through the Van Allen belts too quickly to be exposed to dangerous levels of radiation. 
I don't know what that had to do. I guess that was some other point that they didn't include. <laughs> um, the module's descent engines were not powerful enough to leave a blast crater. The shadows in photos were distorted by wide angle lenses and sloping lunar terrain. And that the Apollo flags had horizontal support bars that made the flag swing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Mythbusters also debunked this. Seriously? Mm -hmm. Okay. I believe we went to the moon. I, I think we I went think to the moon. I think it's weird that we haven't gone back. It's yeah. been a really long time. Yeah. And we're still not back there. That's How many weird. years has it been? It was 1969. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to be a jerk. Be a butthole. <laughs> Technically, I believe that would be, what, 50? <laughs> um, okay. So then I saw this little quote before I go back to my smoking gun. Um, the renowned scientist or science writer, Arthur C. Clarke, once said, two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. Wow. So that's deep, man. I know. It really okay. makes you think. So, um, in 1989, mm -hmm. a whistleblower named Bob Lazar, who worked in Area 51, told the press that he had seen aliens and had helped reverse engineer alien spacecrafts that ran on an antimatter reactor fueled by an element 115. Uh, okay. <laughs> there is so much here to <laughs> unload. Okay. <laughs> Element 115 is synthetic. It did not exist at that time. Okay. It was this matter that they didn't know where it came from. Mm -hmm. And that in itself is like, oh my God, aliens, you know? But the fact that these spacecrafts, the antimatter reactor, he basically explained the way that it moves is, so normal planes, they use jet propulsion. So okay. they take in things and push out in order to go forward like a balloon yeah you blow in air and you let it go and it, it pushes goes, it out <laughs> exactly all around the room exactly okay these spacecrafts mm -hmm. bent time and space and gravity sort of like if you were to put a bowling ball in mm -hmm. on a bed and you were to tilt like push down the direction that you want the ball ball to roll yeah that's what the spacecrafts did they pushed down Oh. With gravity to tilt the spacecraft whichever way they wanted it to go. Okay. Which is why when people see these UFOs, there's no matter stream. There's no uh -huh. trails. There's no chemtrails. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're not like, they don't fly typically like a plane would fly. They're able to, you know, like go from left to right real quick. And like yeah, you were talking like about with the Hornet. Thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he was able to outfly a Hornet. Yeah. Um, okay. So... When this guy blew his whistle, I actually saw the original interview. Um, he was silhouetted and referred to as Dennis. Um, he had been threatened by the government were he to tell of the goings on at Area 51. Now, he was only in one little section. <laughs> section. <laughs> <laughs> he was only in one little section of Area 51. He worked in an area referred to as S4, which only contained the alien spacecrafts with tech beyond human capability. Like, okay. this was 1989. He knows, like, he was a brilliant man. He had all these degrees. He knew that this stuff did not exist yet, okay? I'm getting, like, um, conspiracy theory episode vibes from you right now, and I'm really excited. Yes, but it's not a conspiracy. That's what's great. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so his job was to try and get these antimatter reactors to run on plutonium instead of element 115 because they didn't have it. Yeah. It did not exist. They only had what was in these spacecrafts. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like I look like that guy right now. <laughs> Aliens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So element 115 is a radioactive element and it's been dubbed. I think it was dubbed. It was real recent. It's in the, it's after 2010. Okay. It was dubbed Moscovium because it was first synthesized by Russians and American scientists in 2003. It was mm. discovered in 1989, but they could not get a stable version of it synthesized until 2003. Wow. And they named it Moscovium because it was finally stabilized in Moscow. Okay. Those so, Russians. Yeah. But they were working with American scientists. So okay. we actually worked together on something. Um, Teamwork makes the dream work. Exactly. So tell me how this strange substance is found in 1989 that we can't even figure out till 2003. You yes. know, that's just crazy. Yes. Okay. So Bob, in this documentary, later denied seeing an alien. Um, he does say that he saw something. He looked, as he was walking down a hall, he looked through a window, and he saw these two scientists in lab coats facing toward the door that he was looking at. 
And there was like this little thing on the ground, like three or four feet tall with long arms. And he just glanced at it. He wasn't supposed to be looking in there. So he just kept going. But it always stuck with him. And like, could he say that it was like moving around or alive? No, or? Okay. he didn't look at it long enough. Okay. I'm like, go back, Bob, you know. But yeah. anyway, Damn so it, in his original interview, mm-hmm. he stated that he thought it was an alien. But the more that he thought about it, he's gone through the hypnosis. He's tried to recall everything. He thinks it may have been like a test crash dummy for these spacecraft. Because he said inside the spacecraft, the seats of these things were literally like three to four inches off the ground. I mean, it was real short seats, real small seats. So it had to be somebody of small stature to be able to drive these things. Okay. So they were literally having to probably create dummies to put in these things as test subjects. Okay. Or it was an alien. So, (laughs) um, he did not, however, back down on the spacecraft. Why would they make it so small that it couldn't be flown by a human? I don't understand. They didn't make it. That's the point. Oh, they found it. Right, right. With this element that does not exist. Right, right, right. With seats that do not fit human beings. Okay, it's all coming. Is together. it coming together? Yeah. <laughs> so maybe they were making a replica of the creature that they'd found. That's what he was saying. They were okay. probably doing was okay. trying to figure out what kind of being would fit in this thing. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm glad that you asked that question because I want that to be very clear. Yeah. Okay. Um. So the the nickname for aliens around Area 51, they never said the aliens. They always called them the kids <laughs> <laughs> or the children. Okay. <laughs> but they would never say the actual word alien. He never heard that while he was working there. Okay. Um, okay. So after he came out about this, he actually had someone shoot out his back tire when he was driving. Um, and then to verify that he was telling the truth... A documentary from 2018. You can find it on Netflix. It's what I spent the last hour and a half watching. Mm -hmm. Um, It's called Bob Lazar, Area 51 and Flying Saucers. They looked for proof on... Well, they wanted to verify his credentials, basically. Okay. And the original interview also did this, but they took it a step further. So he had described in his original interview back in 1989 this, like, hand verification system. This is 1989. Apple yeah, that's, is, that's like, maybe... real <laughs> tech savvy. Yeah, like, this stuff does not does not exist yet. Basically, you would put your hand on it, and it would measure and, like, take a picture of the bones inside your fingers, because apparently everybody's are different, and that was the way that... That was, like, their early biometric scanning. They weren't, like, dealing with fingerprints at all? They were... No, it, you just put okay. your hand on it and that's how it was a door lock. Mm-hmm. It would, it would recognize your hand bones and <laughs> let you <laughs> hand bone connect. I was to literally, <laughs> literally just about to do that. <laughs> okay. So this machinery was never something that anybody else ever saw. It was never released. Okay. He, it only came from the word of Bob Lazar. Mm-hmm. This documentary in 2018 found that once that stuff was like old news. Mm-hmm. The government officially released that it did exist. Oh. And there were pictures of it. And they showed him a picture on this interview. And he's like, I never thought I'd be so happy to see that again. He was like this. I told people it existed. They didn't believe me because it was just so far fetched back then. And it was Whoa. literally like an old school hand scanner. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So I'm thinking they forgot. Oh, Gosh, this might corroborate Bob Lazar's story, you know? <laughs> okay, so there was that one thing that corroborated his story. Uh huh. So the original interviewers in 1989, they tried to check his credentials. The schools that he earned degrees at said they had never heard of him. Um, Los Alamos National Lab, where he worked as a physicist, said they had no records of him working. No, there. not Bob. However, okay. a 1982... So seven years before this interview, before he's like stricken from the records, a 1982 phone book from the lab, Los Alamos lab, lists Lazar among the scientists and technicians. Nice. He didn't get all the evidence. Nope. Government. And a 1982 clipping from the Los Alamos newspaper profiling some of his accomplishments also mentioned his employment at the lab. Nice. So they didn't get it all. Um, when called with this evidence, the lab exasperatedly claimed they had no records of him. <laughs> um, e, G, and G, where Lazar was interviewed for the position in S4, also does not have records of him. Magically. It yeah. is obvious they were lying, which mm-hmm. to me gives Bob credibility. 
Yes. Bob also passed four polygraph tests. Love asking it. all of these questions. He was never lying once. Yes. Um, the reason he came forward is he believes it's a crime to not tell us that there is another civilization somewhere out there and that we have artifacts to prove their existence. Yeah. Yeah, Bob. <laughs> okay. So today, Area 51 is still very much in use. Mm-hmm. According to Google Earth, new construction and expansions are continuously happening. Oh, could you see it on Google Earth? I wonder if we could look that up. They don't show you a lot. They oh. actually, I I heard this in the um, the the documentary yeah he said that the building he worked in was like designed to look like it blended in with a mountain so if you were taking an aerial view it would just look like a mountain (laughs) so they're super secretive they actually have um you might see like strange lights in the sky moving up and down in the early mornings it's not a ufo it's actually the semi-secret contract commuter airline using the call sign janet the transports workers from las vegas's mccarran airport to the base so these planes literally fly their workers in from another airport in order to protect area 51 from progress they probably fly them in from the denver airport <laughs> probably okay fascinating so then This is the great thing about all of this is there was so much denial back in the 1980s, the 1970s, all this stuff. But now that like new stuff is out, like they're having to tell us. Okay. So in 2017, several news organizations revealed the existence of the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program, which is AATIP. It is a U.S. government funded investigation into unidentified flying objects from 2007 to 2012. Okay. This secret $22 million program was, was not the first of its kind. The official government UFO studies began in the late 1940s mm-hmm. with something called Project Sign. Um, it provided some of the most credible videos of aerial phenomena to date. Project Sign was originally created to study claims of UFO sightings, but the teams created to do this were instructed not to believe anything they saw and to disprove it instead of explore it. Project Sign was followed by Project Grudge and then Project Blue Book. They mainly wanted to determine if UFOs were a threat to national security. Yeah. I mean, that's very important to know and to understand. And to scientifically analyze the UFO data that they were receiving. Mm -hmm. They closed Project Blue Book in 1969, determining none of the UFO sightings were anomalous, a threat, or extraterrestrial. Ominous? Anomalous. Oh, anomalous. Like an anomaly. Okay. So if you remember... (laughs) Area 51 came to be in 1950, Mm -hmm. 10 years after the first murmurs of alien activity, which were in 1940. Why would we even need the AATIP if they didn't believe in extraterrestrial life? Right. Why did they continue bringing these programs? Because each one would be shut down saying, there was nothing convincing. There's nothing here. But then another one would pop up. Right. Government funded. Right. Okay. Yeah. Government funded, man. That's right. Okay. Okay. So the AATIP has generated a current 490-page report about worldwide UFO sightings from several decades, but it has not been released for the public. The head, Bernie, come on, Bernie. <laughs> the head of the program, Louis Elizondo, resigned from the Pentagon in 2017 protesting government secrecy opposition and that it wasn't being taken seriously. The government claims the program ran out of steam from lack of convincing evidence, while Elizondo, the head of this thing, Mm -hmm. believes there was very compelling evidence we may not be alone. So. Oh, I just got chills. (laughs) Elizondo went on to found an aerospace, science, paranormal, and entertainment company. I don't like the entertainment part, but I think it just means, like, they want, like, video proof and stuff. Yeah. um, Called To the Stars Academy for Arts and Science. Mm -hmm. In addition... In January of this year, the Defense Intelligence Agency released a list of 38 titles researched by the program in response to a Freedom of Information Act. Okay, so this Freedom of Information Act, that's relatively new. Yes. They couldn't fight that anymore. Right. So they had to tell us some of the things they've researched. Are you ready for this? Yes, I'm so ready. These included traversable wormholes. (gasps) Stargates, which if anybody out there has watched Stargate, that was so exciting for me. Yeah. No, I don't I don't know what that is. Okay, well you should get on it. It's on Hulu. It's great. And negative energy. Okay. Invisibility cloaking. <gasps> Shut your mouth. Warp drives. Okay. Dark energy and the manipulation of extra dimensions. 
The government. They also confirmed in May of this year that they, quote, did pursue research and investigation into unidentified aerial phenomena, which confirms that those things exist. Mm-hmm. These are not sci-fi topics. These are real things researched by real scientists in our real government. Yay! And that's just the stuff they've told us about. I feel like you need to take stand up and take a bow after <laughs> that. Drop like, the mic. I've got the tingles. Don't drop the mic. <laughs> Okay, so four government-funded programs have been created since the 1940s to look into UFOs and evaluate threat levels, all supposedly snuffing out due to lack of convincing evidence. Why do they keep creating these programs? Something obviously keeps coming back, and they have to keep investigating it. That's right. Something has caused them to take these su- supposed sci-fi topics and research them as truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So that Tic Tac thing yep. that you were telling us about, yes, that was released alongside the AATIP information. Okay. So when that came out, they were allowed to release that. Maybe. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the government having to admit <laughs> that this should exist. <laughs> very nice. So. They're very well done. Um, so my question is, what are the aliens, like, what's their interest in us? because they have to have like a motive, you know? And honestly, we're so far below their, you know, intelligence and their technical advances. Then why are they interested? Like what if they want to reproduce with us? Like what if their civilizations need are falling? And that's what, okay. So I, what I read a story and it was about a man who, like he said he was abducted, put out on a table and like had this goo put all over him. And it was like kind of like Viagra. Okay. <laughs> and then, no, I know. And then I didn't find this on like Pornhub or anything. Like, <laughs> I really did read this on a legitimate site. And um, one of like the Nordic looking aliens like came in and he's like, I was very attracted to her. And they had multiple, they had sex multiple times and then she said that or he said that she pointed to her belly knowingly and nodded and then ascended into the sky (laughs) (laughs) um but so many okay but so many of so many people do say that they are sexually whatevered yeah, and I mean, that the samples thing? are yeah. taken, you know, like, what, what if they are sperm what samples take, or egg samples? Yeah, or taking samples to see if you have, like, viable whatever to make sure, sh- like, are, if they're going to impregnate you, maybe they want it to be worth their time, you, you know? know? And, like, what if they're pe- like what if they're picking people whose genes are, like, immaculate, you know, and they're like, exactly. this is a good person to reproduce with because... Oh, my God, that means I'm safe because I have problems. <laughs> Me too. Me too, girl. <laughs> So, yeah, but, you know, I mean, it's a thought. It is a thought. And apparently, like, with the alien highway thing, they usually stay close to California and, like, the Pacific Ocean area and where the military is there because there's so many sightings near the military and they think it's because they're watching the military and they're watching our advances in that area. I've actually, I read that the Navy is responsible for a lot of the UFO sightings that are submitted Mm -hmm. because they're constantly looking out for things Mm -hmm. and they're on the coasts and everything, you know, they're out in the water and... So that makes sense. And it's, it's interesting to me because the Navy fully believes that these things are aliens, but then the government Mm -hmm. is like, no, it's, it's this, you know, we just can't tell you about it. It's a weather balloon guys. Yeah, exactly. And that, that excuse flew back then when they could make us think that they didn't have any kind of technology, but now we're smarter. Yeah. You know? And I mean, if they had alien spacecraft in 1989, what the heck do they have now? Right. You know? Right. Well, that brings us to the end. That brings us to the end. And ladies and gentlemen, step on down. We have a new game show (laughs) here for you guys today. It is called Who Said It? Alien Edition. I need a volunteer. Somebody from the audience. Anybody? Well, I'm the only person in the room that we know of. And Kayla. (laughs) I I somehow know your name. You are my contestant. So we are going to play this game and see how many you can get right. Okay. Okay. These are all obviously UFO and alien related, and okay. you're going to guess who said it. If this is like scientist shit, I'm not going to know this. No, it's not at <laughs> okay. all. Okay. Number one, I believe in aliens. 
she told GQ for a 2014 cover story. I look up into the stars and I imagine, how self-important are we to think that we are the only life form? A. Jennifer Lawrence. B. Lady Gaga. C. Katy Perry. God, those are all convincing, but for some reason when you were reading it, I was thinking Jennifer Lawrence. Is that wrong? Katy Perry. Oh, well, that makes sense. She made that song extraterrestrial. <laughs> she's also a And rep- she's part of the only one on his own. She's a reptilian, too. So. <laughs> that, too. <laughs> all right. This celebrity told talk show host Seth Meyers that they saw an extremely convincing documentary on mermaids and explained that they might be alien species that live in parts of the Indian Ocean that we've never explored before. Apparently, the celebrity added, Christopher Columbus had actually seen three mermaids on his way to America. They Uh then told Myers, it must be really sad for you not to believe that mermaids exist. (laughs) Okay, just a side note. I saw a documentary on mermaids and it was bull. So I don't know if that's the same one, but go ahead. Was it A, Samuel L. Jackson? B, Demi Lovato? C, Taylor Swift? I'm going to go with Demi. It is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that sounded ding, like ding, Demi. Ding, 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 ding. Three. I was in Joshua Tree, totally sober. Let me preface, completely fucking sober. I think people would be like, she was on acid or something. I wasn't. I was on nothing. I was totally sober Sally, just a lady in the desert, she said. I look up into the sky and there's a bunch of spaceships. I swear to God, there were like five to seven. And I don't know why I didn't like try and take a picture of it. I just looked at it. I was sitting on a rock and I was like, what the hell is that? I was trying to figure it out and then they went away. Later, they came back in a different formation. She said, I was like, (laughs) those fucking aliens. They were spaceships. Was it A? (laughs) This person sounds like they have a loose screw. (laughs) I gave you some good choices. Was it A, Chrissy Teigen? (laughs) B, Kesha? Or C, Lindsay Lohan? Oh, man. I'm going to go with Lindsay? It was Kesha. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know she <laughs> talked about anything other than that lawsuit that she had. Oh, that was heartbreaking. I haven't heard from her. I know. I haven't heard from her in a long time. Yes. Number four. I was in my backyard in L.A. and I looked up at the sky and saw three flying saucers. I looked at my friend and he said, are you seeing this or am I losing my mind? His friend completely, oh, his friend apparently confirmed he was seeing the same thing. And then I went online and looked and there were three identical sightings two weeks before. Interesting. Was it A, Nick Jonas, B, Harry Styles, or C, Zac Efron? Oh, gosh. I'm going with, I'm between Nick or Zach. I'm going with Nick. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. Yay. Last question for all the points for the <laughs> no prize. Uh, The statement is, there is no doubt that there is life out there. The mathematics of it lead you to that absolute conclusion. In my mind, there is no doubt that the universe teems, teems with life in all of its forms. This person has to be smart. (laughs) But why would they come to visit here and not let themselves be known to everybody is beyond my sense of logic. Because they're raping us. (laughs) True story. Was it A, Johnny Depp? B, William Shatner? Or C, Keanu Reeves. Oh, God. You had to throw in Keanu? <laughs> He's like the curveball in everything. I know. <laughs> I'm going to say William Shatner. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I think the teams, teams yes. really kind of go- gives yeah. it away there. <laughs> that is fascinating. <sighs> and I agree with William Shatner. Yeah, I do too. Smart man. So I came into this not really sure what I was going to believe and left a believer. And I think the government is hiding a I'm lot of a things. believer. <laughs> Not a trace. Da, 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 da. I'm down in my mind. Okay, I just thought that was really fitting. I don't know why, but whenever I hear that song now, I just think of Donkey from Shrek. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. <laughs> well, guys, we're not alone. I really hope you don't get abducted. Try not to think of that as you're falling asleep and your little head's on your soft pillow with your cozy blanket. Good night sleeping, guys. Good night sleeping. Damn it. <laughs> leave that whole deep sigh in so good luck sleeping guys good luck sleeping